Sally Temple and Neural Stem Cell Institute. It was brought home to me when Ben Barris did a lecture at Harvard. I, I would just recommend that everybody watch this lecture, which is on YouTube. And he talked about the attrition that occurs. So while you may have 50% PhD students, by the time you get to you know, first hiring into, let's say, an academic appointment, then the percentage of women falls off. And you realize that this attrition is going on, and obviously, you know, even today, you see that imbalance. So it's something that we actively have to work on. Things are changing for the better, but the numbers speak for themselves. Um, just recently, I also wanted to assess salaries and went onto the website of, uh, uh, because we're in the US, the American Professor um, Organization, I have to find out the name of that. Um, when I went to that website, what I saw as the breakdown of salaries across the country, you could see that men and women are being paid differently. So you have the difference in percentage women in certainly leadership and more prominent uh, faculty positions and in the pay discrepancy as well. So we need to be actively addressing both of these elements. In my lab, and I've always said, we put family first. Um, if your child is sick, you go home. If you're pregnant and you feel ill, you go home. Um, I found that I've had my best ideas while nursing a baby. <laughs> uh, I think that we have to adapt to the, you know, to a, a family life, knowing that in the end, productivity an accomplishment doesn't really depend. It, it, this is a factor that can actually benefit in the end. So I, I feel that creating an environment where family is first um, makes people more comfortable, more, more um, able to think freely and come up with good ideas. So in the end, it's positive for productivity and it's positive for career. And when we started our own institute um, at the Neural Stem Cell Institute, we were able to put in place rules about this to make sure that we had good support for uh, maternity and paternity support, uh, for leave, for taking into account life, life with kids. Um, so uh, I, I think it's something that we can strive to create that environment in our in our working life and if we're in a leadership position we can ensure that you know hopefully institute wide um, that these sorts of practices are put into place it's extremely important to network and to make sure that you have really good peer support um, to reach out to leaders who you admire, who both, both men and women, who are supportive of women in science. Um, so much of success does depend on that personal networking, who you know. Uh, and then I would say when you're giving talks, make sure that you acknowledge uh, the researchers who contributed and make sure that their names get out there. I was very fortunate in that my PhD supervisor did that for me, Martin Raff, and uh, without his support, I, I think that it would have been much tougher. It has been a fabulous experience for me to be involved in the ISSCR. You know, I'm love stem cell research and now I'm in a community that values the research and I think also values the sort of things that I think matter about promoting um, at all stages of career uh, 
a balance in gender, a balance in, in geographical uh, involvement of scientists from different types of institutes and cultures and really helping to bring that mix together. Um, when I come to this meeting, uh, it's, it's my pleasure to really interface with scientists from across the globe, um, all of whom share the passion I have for stem cell research in its great variety. So uh, definitely that ability to interface, to network, and to create also a, a network that lasts beyond the annual meeting. So ISSCR membership affords me the opportunity to get in touch with people, um, to get my work published through the Society Journal, um, and then to rely on that network throughout the year for really uh, collaborative advances and helping the people that train with me advance in their career as well.